Today, we're going to talk about how to pick a niche for your law firm. A niche makes you more valuable to your clients and more profitable for you. Hi, I'm Nate Law from coachlaw.biz and please like and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. I appreciate it. First of all, is it niche, niche? I'll let you decide. Usually you're going to be thinking about, well, am I a family law attorney? Am I criminal defense? Am I in patent law? Am I doing bankruptcy? What am I doing here? There's some kind of word or area of the law that's defined a lot more by the actual law itself than really about the type of practice it is, or maybe even who we're helping. I can almost guarantee you that you've already thought about the area of law or areas of law that you want to be in. While the specific area of the law might vary, there's a few big picture things that you need to do no matter what niche you're going to go into. The three big picture things that everyone needs to do is determine their vision, their mission, and their core values. So first, when we think about your vision for the world, that's a lot broader than even just uh, the legal profession, for example. This is something that when you think about how you want the world to be, how you want your world to be, you're thinking about change generally. This is kind of like your why, like Simon Sinek talks about, uh, your reason for uh, moving forward, for getting up out of bed every morning. Your vision can go a lot further beyond just your law firm itself. Your vision needs to be something that's integrated with your own life and what you're naturally bent towards. For instance, for me, helping people efficiently solve problems or efficiently deal with conflict and get to a resolution without uh, the dictates of like outside people, like really empowering them to do it. That's something that's really important to me. This part of the big picture in terms of working on your niche can be a lot broader than just law related. It could be something that is not just a boring elevator speech either. Uh, ditch that. Make it something that uh, you're really giving people a picture for the future or the way things really could be. After all, when we're talking about your law firm or your business, this is something that you're going to be in the middle of every single day. The question we really need to ask is, what are we devoting our life to here? This is a big thing and it needs to be integrated with your life and who you are as well. Once you feel like you've developed your kind of primary uh, noble cause, that vision, then we move on to what your mission is. Now, this is something more than um, just a very short term thing. It's still long term and it's a lot, but it starts getting more specific than your vision. The best way that I can define mission is by looking at it as a big, hairy, audacious goal. This is something that is still uh, a goal in terms of smart goals. It's specific, measurable. It's, uh, it's time bound, it's all the things that, uh, that a typical goal should be, but it's a little out there, it's a little crazy. It's definitely beyond anything that you've ever tried before, either professionally or uh, really shot for in your law firm. The big, hairy, audacious goal, or BHAG, as uh, Jim, Jim Collins termed it in, in his book, Good to Great, is something that uh, is still connected to your vision. It still has that kind of twinge of uh, hopefulness and um, excitement and something that's a little bit crazy. Um, but it is also something that you can work toward. Your mission is something that is going to guide the framework for all of your shorter term goals as you move along. So while there's a lot of examples for uh, a BHAG or a big hairy audacious goal, I'll give you mine. So in my law firm, we have uh, one major revenue stream that makes up, uh, historically has made up probably 75% of what our typical income is and everything else is about the other 25 percent and so looking at that that's something that is obviously you know uh, it's not very diversified right and that's something that uh that i felt like we needed to change our big hairy audacious goal is to flip that and make all the other revenue streams increase to the point that this 75 percent of more of the one in income stream is just completely flipped and that's actually 25. That is a massive audacious goal. Um, and we set that as an eight to 10 year goal and I don't know if we're gonna hit it uh, because that that's 
out there. That's like the sending the man to the moon kind of example. Uh, but that's what we're shooting for. And that's an example of something that is uh, connected to our uh, larger vision um, of uh, the particular people that we're trying to serve. And it's also something that really makes us more uh, valuable as well. So defining your mission really starts to help you hone in on, um, on your niche. I'll just give you another example of a BHAG. It might be internal and it might be something that you are trying to improve the quality of life for yourself, maybe for all your employees. For example, having uh, a BHAG of having every employee being able to take four weeks off a year paid and, uh, and to make it even more audacious to not come back to a desk that's just a dump truck of work that's left over that's piled up over the week or two weeks that they've been gone. That's a pretty big, hairy, audacious goal for a lot of small law firms. And that can be something that is very motivating uh, to your team if you have a, a team that you're working with in your law firm. Now, at this point, you're thinking, okay, but how does that define the niche that I'm choosing for my law firm? And this is how, because if you're defining what your mission and, and vision are uh, for yourself, for your law firm, for the people that you're going to be working with, that's going to help determine the types of clients and the types of cases that you need to be taking and that you can take that fit in with that vision and that mission and that purpose. If part of your mission and your vision is for a completely uh, remote work, well, then you're going to maybe choose something along the lines of, you know, estate planning or something like that as opposed to like probate litigation or something where that's an adjacent area that's still uh, related to sim a similar area of law, but requires you to be in the office or to be to together um, as a team physically or to be going to court uh, regularly day in and day out. To drill down even farther, you've got to have some values that really define your unique contribution to your vision and what that mission is. Your unique values, core values, core behaviors, whatever you want to call them, are things that are unique to you that already exist. They're not aspirational things that you need to go out there and try to be, but they're also kind of not these pay to play things like uh, integrity, honesty, hard work, you know, things like that. They need to be more specific and a little more weird. Uh, than those kind of general ideas. Your core defining values, either as a person, an individual, um, or for your whole law firm, are things that are, um, like I said, a little bit weird, but they're also not marketing things. They're not things that you necessarily would um, use as a marketing piece for you know, getting clients. They might be things you talk about to clients and say, hey, one of our core values is this. We have a lot of fun serving you in this way. Um, you know, once you kind of have an established relationship, uh, but these are not things that you would use, um, you know, in a marketing piece. These are things that are internal to you that define who you are, how your unique contribution is and serve as a guide. Really. That's really the most important thing is that these, these core values are something that serve as a guide for you and how you're going to run your niche practice. And again, kind of staying away from the area of law um, as a niche and looking at your niche practice in terms of something that's going to be more profitable and get you the kind of clients that you want to work with. Your niche is beyond the area of law in that it's also how you serve those clients and the way in which you deliver those services. For example, if one of your kind of core behaviors or core values is extreme communication, for instance, um, that's kind of a interesting idea. Okay, what does it mean to you? Well, it might mean that you are um, insanely available to your clients. And that might be the niche that you're kind of choosing, even beyond being a good you know, domestic relations attorney um, or, or something like that. You, you are someone that is just inordinately, insanely available to your clients in one way, shape, or form. That in itself is a very specific niche and something that you can really hone in, focus on, and eventually be known for. Because clients are looking for uh, people that they can trust and they need to know what your niche is. They need to know 
eventually kind of what it is about you uh, that they can really hang their hat on and really rely on and really feel like they can lean into and get value from. So when I started out by saying kind of a niche makes you more profitable and more valuable to your clients, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I want you to maximize your value to your clients and your value to yourself and your potential for profit by focusing on a niche that is integrated with who you really are. I remember one of the niches that I first learned about was uh, qualified domestic relations orders or quadros, they call them on, you know, kind of on the West Coast in family law cases. Those were something that are a specific portion of an order of a domestic relations judgment in a you know dissolution or divorce. I just thought that's so narrow. Who does that? That's the smallest, most narrow thing. And yet when you're a divorce lawyer and you're trying to get this judgment finalized and you, there's these financial issues you're trying to work through, that's something that you need. You need to be able to refer your client, yourself, another attorney to someone that has that very niche ex uh, expertise. Your core values or behaviors are going to be these guardrails, these guidelines for you to keep you in balance and know what to say no to and know what to put your energies and your resources toward to get you towards your goals. So that example of the um, that specific kind of order in a family law case, for instance, is just an example of uh, my next point, which is find attorneys who need referrals. Referrals for specific areas, uh, like the one I mentioned, for instance, um, those are things where if you work on your relationships with attorneys who you know might have similar clients, have um, clients that are in a similar kind of stage of life or in a, have similar needs as uh, the type of people that you're looking to help and, and work with, those are the kind of relationships um, that are really going to help you solidify whatever your niche is. And here's just a suggestion uh, for that. Uh, think about it in terms of how helpful you can be to some of these other attorneys. You can come off as either being desperate and saying, hey, I need you to give me referrals. Or you can pose it as, hey, I think I might be able to help you in these kind of situations. Let me know how I can help. That's gonna be a much better uh, kind of attitude and you're gonna get a lot better results thinking about it in terms of how you can help fellow professionals by being a resource for them for specific needs uh, for their clients as well. Personally, I have a few attorneys and, and other colleagues in other areas of law that I love referring people to because I know what they do, I know how they do it, and I know that they're gonna do a good job. I'm excited to refer people to them. When I make a good referral, I feel like I'm being helpful. So don't feel like it's a weird thing to ask um, other attorneys about this because, um, like I said, it's a way that you can help um, other colleagues, other uh, fellow lawyers out as well. So choosing the right niche for you, for yourself as a professional, for your law firm is something that's going to actually bring re amazing results for your clients, uh, for your community. It's something that is going to uh, make you more profitable, value, valuable to your clients. And that's why these are some steps that can serve as guidelines for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.